YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. A series where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. And boy, y'all got some questions today. Uh, if you ever want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, a little bit extra. We, we appreciate y'all, and y'all always got fire questions as well, too. Uh, so y'all bring it, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't, that's fine, too. We all still one big family. Team Keep It Clean, like I said, the questions, you know, fire as usual. We got a lot to cover. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Calm City. Well, I guess more of a rant. He's just getting it off his chest. He said, the two things, the taunting call, it reminds me of the law because a person thinks it's a stupid law, doesn't make it not a law. If they called it all year and stop, then they cost every team prior. So you continue to call it until it's no longer the rule. Again, yeah, so terrible law then. But anyway, he said, uh, is it fair to say also that John Harbaugh said we were all out of corners due to injury? That's why they decided to go and live with the results. I'm good. I would have went for it simply because judging the momentum in overtime uh, would have caused the same result and unnecessary energy, in my opinion, of course. Yeah, with that, agree to disagree. Um, I just, again, with, with the two-point conversion, it's all or nothing. And, again, I, 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 we know how the Ravens operate. So it was, wasn't a big surprise that they were doing the call. I didn't like it, but it wasn't a big surprise that they were doing it because we know how they get down. I, I do for sure think that the Bengals game impacted that a lot because if the Bengals would have won, then I don't think they'd get so aggressive, but we'll never know. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, hearing the news about Marlon Humphrey made me think of your video early in the week. We've, all, we've known all year something ain't been right with him. Then they signed a bunch of corners. The writing was on the wall. Uh, now I'm truly sad, but we have games to play. I don't know how, but I'll be here for it no matter what. Feeling like Apollo Creed. Uh, and then he said, let's be honest. Winning is definitely like a cologne. Uh, the offensive line has been terrible outside of the KC game. True. Uh, the game is one up front, but winning blurred the lines. I don't think so. I, I disagree with that because uh, that's something we've been talking about all year long, man. All year long, we've been saying, despite the team winning, we see these holes, we see these issues, we see these things that Ravens, if, if, they winning, which is great, but if they don't fix it, they ain't going to be winning for long, at least when it counts. Um, so, no, I, I don't think it's really covered anything. It's made stuff look a little better, but we still see those issues. But he said, now our injuries and realities are at the forefront. During the winning, we won without Lamar, so it was never really about him. It was about a season that should have been lost in injury and may very well be. Um, that one, that part confused me. Let me read it again. He said, uh, during the winning, we won without Lamar, so it was never really about him. It, oh, this was about a season that should have been lost in injury. That part I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand that part because we definitely were not winning without Lamar. <laughs> Obviously, the Bears game, but besides that, the, the wins, the comebacks, the crazy, without Lamar, no, 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 no. Uh, he said Lamar, he said Lamar has been as bad as Baker. He's just more talented. I have no answers to what the rest of the season will hold. Just like you, I'm wishing for the best. Oh, he's been as bad as Baker. Well, recently he's been it's been pretty rough. It's been pretty rough. Um, as bad as Baker, I would have to look at everything. I I don't I I would probably disagree with that based off of the the games and because again we we can't just get caught up in in the recency. Right now Lamar is definitely in a slump. So if you say recently he's been as bad as Baker, uh, okay maybe, but overall this season, nah, I mm -mm, no 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 no. Not at all, because Baker Mayfield, like like you talked, the, the the offensive line over there is twenty times better. The running backs over there, fifty times better. And that's not a shot at all, guys. It's just they're healthy. Well, they just did lose one guy for the season, but they only lost one guy for the season. We've lost like fifty, like fifty. So their wide receivers, I wouldn't say the Browns' wide receivers now are better. I mean, they had Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry, and they had their Hollywood, their version of Hollywood Higgins. So they had some they had Peoples Jones, so they got some some nice receivers now. Um, so they were comparable earlier. Then they got rid of Odell Beckham Jr. Um, 
so the, the receivers are comparable. But the offensive line, their offensive line is way better. Their running backs are way better. Tight ends, Mark Andrews is better than all their tight ends, but they have more complementary tight ends, complementary to each other. We got Mark Andrews, and it's like, oh, okay. Nick Boyle still hurt. Josh Oliver, he's been sort of MIA. They don't really use him too much anyway. But over there, they got Austin Hooper. They got David Njoku. They got um, uh, the guy who went to, to Florida, to FIU, I think. I forget his name. Um, so, to, now, Lamar's been as bad as Baker. No. Because mm -mm. you, you got to look at context, too. And, again, like you said, the, 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 the talent over there is, is overall is better. It's much better on the offense. Because, again, that, just offensive line alone, has, it makes such a big difference. Lamar don't have that. If, if, if he had that offensive line, oh, boy. Eight and four. No. We, 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 if he had that offensive line, what are we? Uh, like 11 and two? Or, ooh, that, that was something great. But with that, with that offensive line, things change a lot. And I don't think that the slump that Lamar is in right now would be as bad of a slump if we had that offensive line. Because I think that something that's contributed to Lamar's slump right now has been constantly having guys in his face. Constantly having guys like be all that pressure, the, the sacks, the hits. Always having to run for his life all season, all season long. Like literally all season long. And when you have to do so much physically every single game, then it can catch up to you mentally too. So I think it's definitely impacting Lamar just a lot. This question came from my guy Rainmaker and appreciate you being a patron. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the family. And that includes Pookie. Oh, yeah, Pookie, Pookie a part of the squad, too. Appreciate that. I'm wondering if we were looking at things the wrong way as far as Boykin is concerned. Bateman is starting to suffer from the same problem that Boykin had. Lamar is not looking his way and he's running wide open sometimes. Boykin had the same problem. Do you think Lamar has reverted back to uh, being Mandrews dependent again? I know he's his safety blanket, but he has to spread the ball around to keep defenses honest. He almost has more interceptions this year than his other three years combined. I know we have injuries up and down the roster, but using all of his weapons would help him out more. Just one of your thoughts on this. Oh, yeah. We, um, when, whenever we talked about Boykin uh, and the situation that it was with him with the Ravens, I always talked about how it, it wasn't that Boykin was so bad. It was just that the chemistry was off because there was just a lack, lack of opportunity, lack of targets, lack of consistency. Uh, I know when um, whatever Boykin does, when he messes up, it would get highlighted uh, so much more because he just got the ball so much less. Like, say, for instance, if Hollywood messed up or Mark Andrews messed up, um, then they'd be like, oh, OK, they just a little miscommunication. But it's because they get a lot of targets. So it wouldn't be blown up like it would be for Miles Boykin. When he messes up, it's like, oh, boy, oh, this guy's terrible. Da, 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 da. So with Miles Boykin, it's just um, that that's all that it is. Uh, and with, yeah, with Rashad Bateman, I, it is. I feel like it's a different kind of pressure on Rashad Bateman uh, because he's a first round draft pick. Miles Boykin was a third round draft pick. Um, so, I mean, they're both receivers, though, and they both, it's up to Lamar to, uh, when they're on the field, if they're in a position to make a play, it's up to him to get them the ball. And if he's in the position to even get them the ball, you know, he, he'd be running for his life half the time. Um, but it's up to them to just make something happen. Uh, so Rashad Bateman, I mean, let's, let's see how it plays out because not only is it a different kind of pressure, but it's a different kind of pressure, uh, not just on Rashad Bateman, but a different kind of pressure on the Ravens organization as well because of his draft status and because of the investment. So we'll see what these guys do and how they improve. Or, yeah, how they improve, because there's not going to be any this is not going to be a lack of improvement. It's going to be improvement. They are going to have to make it happen. Because he's their first round pick. Next question came from my guy, Harry. And appreciate you being a patron. And he always bringing some fire with his questions, man. Anyway, he said, hello, engraving and team. Keep it clean, family. My question is, who needs to be replaced from Ravens staff next year for the team to succeed? I'm not rooting for anyone to lose their job. But we all have jobs where we are being evaluated. And if you can't perform, you will be replaced. Steve Saunders, the strength and conditioning coach, is the first person that needs to be replaced. Just look at the players on injury reserve. Need I say more? I mean, as I really ain't got no follow up for that, cause that's it's big. That's I, I it and but it see the thing is so weird. Like, how can somebody really like 
get that bad at their job that fast. And I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. Because, again, the Ravens, they, they haven't dealt with injuries like this in, like, forever. Like, like, like everybody getting hurt. Like, is it really him or is it just coincidence? I don't know. That's, that's what makes it so tricky about Steve Saunders, man. Anyway, he said, Giro and James Urban. Lamar has regressed in his play, and we keep hearing how Roman has all these great plays in the vault, but uses none of them. Well, he used a couple of them uh, against the Steelers, a couple of them. And I was like, okay, let's go. Uh, he said, those two need to be replaced. Mm. So with Greg Roman uh, and James Urban, that's obviously offensive coordinator. James Urban is the uh, QB coach. Um, I, if if they're going to replace them, I just, I don't even know how, I don't even know what they're going to do right now. It's just, it's, it's crazy because you would think, okay, this offense, the way that it's been, yeah, they, they could get replaced. But then you think also too, oh, would, would the Ravens give them a pass because of injury? Um, and it's just, it's so tricky. There's been these slow starts. There's been sometimes just lack of adjustments. Sometimes there's been adjustments, but they came super late in games. Um, and it's not all on Giro. It's, it's been on Lamar as well. Um, but you just wonder, like, how, what, what more can they do together as a unit? Um, is Giro really the best guy to continue Lamar's career with? Giro is a nice introductory guy. He was big in the run game with the passing game. So, oh, it's okay. But he was a good introductory guy. But is he a good guy moving forward for just Lamar's growth? That's something to, uh, to think about. Uh, and he said, Joe, Joe D, I'm going to call him D. I ain't going to even try to mess up his last name. The O-line coach. We have been bullied and pushed around so much, and he hasn't coached up decent replacements. He got to go. Mm, my guy here, he ain't playing a day. He said, oh, you, 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 you're out of here. So he want to pretty much sound like a whole new staff. Um, but, yeah, the offensive line, it, it's, it's been bad. And, but a lot of guys have been injured. Um, but even with the guys that are here, um, something that seems to be missing is just that dog, that, that heart. It seems like that, that offensive line is missing heart and just somebody that's just nasty. But Ben Cleveland's on the sideline. Anyway, next up, he said, the one that I don't want to go is Wink. But if he doesn't change his philosophy and learn how to pressure the QB without blitzing and can't get guys to know their assignments and be fundamentally sound, he can go too. And he said, can't wait to see the comments on this one. Ooh, that should be fun. But yeah, with Wink, um, mm, Wink has done a better job adjusting, especially over the past couple of weeks. And, and I know in the Steelers game, oh, yeah, they gave up 17 points in the fourth quarter. That's that's not good at all. That's that's pretty bad. But then you look at the situation like they have been keeping the Steelers out of the end zone three points through three quarters in the offense. The Ravens offense wasn't doing anything with it. So it's like, man, the defense, like I, I couldn't even be too mad at them for giving up 17 in the four. I couldn't be mad at that because they have been doing their job for the longest. And yeah, you want them to do their job four quarters. But if you're doing your job so much and you notice somebody else, they're like they're they not doing anything. And you just putting all this work and it's like, oh, man. What more I got to do? So that could frustrate you. And then stuff just started breaking down. And then it all fell apart. So with Wink, though, I um, I don't know, man. It's just I, right now, I just I really don't know. I don't know what I want right now. Because uh, so much stuff is just all the way up in the air. Um, and it's just it's confusing. But like you said about the pass rush, about the pressure, uh, just situational football. That's it. It's just situational football. We, we want guys that will be better at situational football. But with this, with you saying that you want G. Rowe, James Urban gone, uh, Joe D., the offensive line coach, gone. Um, and, and, I mean, I would assume that you, I know you said Wink, too, if he doesn't make enough adjustments. But are you including Rob Ryan in there, too? It sounds like with, with the whole staff, the only person that you left off your list was Harbaugh. Next question came from our guy, Nick Brick, who is also a patron. Appreciates you. He said, I was Mr. Optimistic until the Steelers game. I think you said it best when you said Lamar looks broken. But I think Greg Roman does, too. What is this obsession with the big play? Whatever happened to the guys that wanted 10 play drives in third and shorts? We, as a fan base, wanted them to hit on the big play opportunities they missed in the past and complete on the deep ball more. But I didn't think we had to abandon everything else to do it. Lamar throwing the ball 37 times and being our leading rusher is crazy against a team that has historically bad rush defense. 
Whatever happened to one play at a time? Do you think we can get back to that before it's too late? We see flashes of it, but no consistency. We went from holding Lamar back to pushing him to his physical limits every play. Wow, that is something right there. And yeah, what, what, what is this obsession with the big play? The big plays, those are the sexy plays. Those are the plays that everybody remembers the most. Those are the plays, the highlight plays that get you accolades, that get you on sports. And, and, but it, more importantly, it gets you that big chunk of yards when the short plays and the short stuff you're struggling with. Um, so Ravens, they, I feel like with Ravens, they, they struggle so much on offense early on in games. So then they start just pressing. They start pressing. Lamar starts pressing. Giro starts pressing. The offense, they just start pressing as a whole. So this is what they should do, my opinion. Um, we know with the offense, the, 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 the up-tempo, quicker pace offense, that's been looking good. I wish they would do that more in regular season games early on. Now, somebody brought up a, a, a good, interesting point. They were like, well, maybe with the up-tempo offense, maybe they're saving it for the playoffs. Catch some teams off guard. See, I just don't know. Because, again, I, uh, I, I just I want to believe that so bad. I want to, but I just don't know if, like, uh, first off, you got to make the playoffs. You got to. And if your offense is going to only score, like, six points or seven points in the game, that ain't going to cut it. Even if they only going to score 14, that ain't going to cut it. Unless your defense is going to be extra locked down, which uh, they're not going to. Um, but... I, I, I just, I, I, like I said, I want to believe it, but I just, I can't. Um, so they, yeah, they got to work on the short game too. They got to work on the short game. Um, every pass and play doesn't, again, Lamar got to get better at them check downs. Sometimes the check downs are there, whether it be Latavius or Devontae or Patrick or whoever, even a receiver come across the back. Hey, everything ain't got to be a 10, 15, 20 yard play. You can take the short stuff and enough time, the short stuff turns into the long stuff too. So it's just um, they got to spread the ball out more. Lamar got to spread the ball out more. Giro got to call more plays, uh, more short passing game plays. You ain't got to send everybody deep every time. <laughs> That's probably why they got to have such a rotation because dudes be getting tired. They be like, oh, oh, I mean, I'm tired of running all these deep routes all the time. I need a break. Next question came from the Netta. I appreciate you being a patron. She said, hey, Graven, how are you and the family doing? We're doing pretty good. She said, did you think that or do you think that Lamar is okay? Because he seems a bit... A little, a little bit off since he's been sick. I think that he might still be sick, but they are keeping quiet about it. I'm just wondering, what do you think? Thank you for all that you do. No, thank you for all that you do in support. And, and you've been sending fire questions for, seems like, years now. Um, but I, I don't know. I, somebody, oh, it was my mom. She brought that to my attention the other day. She said there was a game. I'm not sure if she's in after the Steelers game or after the Browns game, but she said there was a game where Lamar, his his eyes, they just looked extra like swollen, and he just he just looked off, man. And I was like, I, I don't know, I didn't see it, but um, I know a lot of people have been thinking the same thing that Lamar is still like sick, he's still dealing with something. And I, I know he he did say that he's 120, percent but I mean I wouldn't expect him to come out and say, oh yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming out and saying that. Um. But I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Because um, that, would, that would make some stuff a little bit more clear. Uh, but I, I hope he isn't. I hope he's not. Um, but I just, I really, like, have no clue right now. Next question came from my guy Marco. He said, I ain't grave and I want to ask your opinion because I'm not sure if I'm the only one seeing this. And I don't like it that I noticed that Lamar has been playing not as good from the pocket and taking too much time dancing around in the pocket. And I don't like what I'm seeing because it feels like it's just going to be another heartbreaking playoff year if he keeps playing like that. Why would you think he's holding on to the ball too much and being off on a lot of throws? Because the offensive line is not the greatest, but it has given him enough time and he just holds on to the ball too much and they result in sex. So um, with that, yeah, he has been holding on to the ball for a, uh, a long, long period of time. Resulting in some good plays, but also some bad plays. Uh, and I think it's just him trying to compensate for everything that the Ravens have lost this year. They've lost a countless number of players to injury. Um, the offense has just been slow. And I think a lot of times that he just he puts everything on his back. Cause I mean, uh, everything has been on his back already. But I feel like with everybody that they lost and, and when they struggle, 
He takes accountability. He's like, you know what? It's on me. I got to make something big happen. I got to give us that momentum. We need that boost. We need that just that jolt of energy. And I think he takes it upon himself to try to make something happen. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Next question also came from a patron, my guy Shakir. He said, are the Ravens going to be forced to find a way to bring back MP Juice, man? Hey, um, that would certainly be something. Uh, but yeah, he's no, he, he's not coming back this year. It'd be nice if we could just, if, if Ravens could just turn injuries off. Oh boy. And imagine that it'd be like the Avengers in, uh, in Endgame. Was it Endgame? Or the, uh, the, whichever one, Inf Infinity War, whichever one it was where they all came back. I think it was Endgame though. But imagine that, it, that that's how the Ravens would be walking into the facility. Then the music start going through and through. And all that Because people would be like Whoa You see Gus JK MP The shot Like Oh That'd be crazy Too bad it's not happening Shout out to Graven